Jack in. It's hard to say, okay, it's a buyer's or a seller's market, right? When you want to buy a home, you're going to buy a home. And we've said for years on this show and before I was doing this show, a home, uh, an appraisal is something you get. But at the end of the day, Gumbo Nation and Parker, a house is worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. That's why the last couple years we had people, it wasn't just like selling, you know, L.A. and selling, you know, uh, Beverly Hills where people are like uh, asking 2.4 and bought it for three, three mil. We were seeing that here locally across the Gulf South because people were like, hey, I'm going to pay more. And that's because people have better credit scores. Wages have been up. Now, right now, as much money as you're making, it's all going to gas, which is down, which did cause inflation to not go up like so many, including myself, was expecting. They know what they're doing. They're pulling the plugs where they need to. And I think we're going to see some more, uh, if I had to bet, we're 90 days away from uh, midterms. Probably going to see a little bit more uh, charity coming out. Gas price is probably going to get a little bit better. And we'll take that. But when it comes to purchasing a home, keep that in mind. And maybe that's something we need to kind of chat about, uh, you know, discuss. A house is worth what you're willing to pay. So that's why I circle back and say, Parker, it's kind of a perfect storm. Sellers have to understand if anybody missed the boat, right? How many times have we had to answer the question, did I miss the boat? If anybody missed the boat, it's those who didn't sell their home the last two years, not buyers. Would you agree there, James? Well, it's just something that comes up on the show constantly in the last eight years because people are always licking their finger and sticking in the wind and seeing which way it's blowing. Is it a buyer's market and a seller's market? And we're in a, the rare instance right now where I would say it's pretty balanced. Yes. And, and and that's a good thing for both sides. You know, it'd be nice if you had the advantage of absolutely skyrocketing housing prices if you're selling. But if you do sell, you got to turn around and live somewhere. So what are you going to do? Go rent an apartment now? Or are you going to buy another house because it's an inflated price you know so th there, there's a sting for both the buyers and the sellers market because in most transactions you are going to be a buyer and then a seller or maybe both at the same time like a contingency loan or whatever uh so you don't really want it to be too hard on either side of the pendulum because if it breaks up either the buying or selling of your house you know your life is stuck you you most of the time when you move it's because you have to so uh, the balance is probably a good thing, grease in the wheels for people who are going from one house to another. And they'll probably appreciate this uh, a little bit more because they're not going to get burnt or score on either end. Absolutely. And I think <clears throat> and I think this is a good thing. We were seeing houses that in my 30 years would have definitely made the wall of shame. Um, some of these houses that were being bought at $180, $200 a square foot that you go, ooh, I don't even know if I would put that in my old tree house I had and, and feel safe. <laughs> and yet that's what we were seeing. So now here's another word, right? <clears throat> you know, you got to love our <clears throat> industry. This week, Redfin put out a... um put out a, uh, a an article. So I want to read this. This is the word. The word is called stale. So when you hear me say stale, let me explain what that is. Redfin defines stale as a home that has been, in, been sitting on the market for 30 days or more. Now, keep in mind, this was unheard of, right? Unheard of the last two years. But now the last 90 days, and this is what I'm explaining, that's what's crazy about this industry. It's not, well, I didn't have to do that in the past. Heck, there's stuff you got to do now you didn't have to do 120 days ago. <laughs> right. But, right? I mean, it's changing. So from Redfin, 
while homes are still flying off the market at a record pace, again, hence seller's advantage, right? From Redfin here, the share of homes listed for at least 30 days without going under contract has grown by 12.5% year over year in July. That's a big number, James. Oh, yeah. 61.2% of, of for sale homes stayed on the market for 30 days or longer, up from 54% in July of 21. So this is the number of new listings hitting in July was actually down 6%. But the total number of homes up for sale was four. This is supply and demand. This is a perfect example of it, right? So the number of new listing is down, but overall listings up going for homes for sale is up. Because right now, who's selling their house? Divorce, death, job reload. Period. Unless you've been in your home for 40 years and you have no note, maybe those people fall in. But for the other, whatever percentage of folks that bought the last two years, you're not. You are not selling right now because you're going to wait for that next wave. Or, heck, you know what you're going to do? This house that you thought maybe it'll be my starter home, you got to make a lot of decisions when you go, okay, uh, sweetheart, do we want to sell this home? And you stare down at your rate and it's screaming 2.75. Well, you're, you're describing the position that you put me in at the beginning of this year. I got a 2.95% mortgage rate. Imagine how calcified I am in my position. It would take a lot to get me to move. There could be a great house that's twice the size that opens up next door. And I'm like, I don't know, man. What's the what's the price on it? So it, um, it, it's got me in, in that mindset already because if I jump out of this, I'm going to go into, what, a 5% mortgage? Well, that's a big difference on the monthly note. Tremendous difference. Or do you... So this is what's going to be down the road, and we'll be talking about this next summer and, and years down the road. Do I keep this home? And if I can afford it, now I go buy an investment property, right? Because now I'm looking at that's where you're going to see that game change down the road.